Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the exact steps I took to become a cybersecurity engineer in just a few easy steps so you can copy me and do it too. If you're looking to break into this exciting field, which is cybersecurity engineering field, without the fluff, make sure to watch this video till the end. This video is going to cover five items. Number one, what is cybersecurity engineering and who is it for? So a lot of people have different ideas about what cybersecurity engineering actually is. Here is my take. Security engineering is just like any other engineering field. We build systems, design solutions, and we maintain them. We're the architects and the creative minds in cybersecurity. We need to have a high level overview of what's needed now and what will be needed in the future. What I love about security engineering is that we're always thinking ahead. For example, if a customer wants a web application firewall, WAF solution, we have to deploy a highly available system that not only meets their current needs right now, but also scales for the next five or even 10 years. To sum it all up, security engineers come in, design, deploy, and maintain security solutions, systems, and products. We also focus on making operations smoother by automating tasks and assisting with the software development lifecycle through DevSecOps. But I'll get into that later down the line. Number two. Now, you might be wondering if security engineering is so cool, why doesn't anyone talk about it on YouTube or social media? Well, the reality is many influencers and content creators out there don't know anything about it. This field isn't straightforward when it comes to getting the right training and content. Training providers haven't come up with a streamlined process to create content for security engineering. What do I mean by this? Let's say you want to get into pen testing. The roadmap is pretty clear. Learn about exploits, network penetration testing, Active Directory, etc. Go and get a TCM cybersecurity certification and you're, you're okay. There are tons of courses on Udemy and other platforms, hundreds of them about pen testing. But for security and engineering, it's not like you can just go through CompTIA content and become a cybersecurity engineer. Also, since you'll be dealing with lots of products and vendor solutions, there's a problem of licensing. Most training providers and YouTube video focus on open source and free tools like Snort and Suricata. But in reality, when you're working with clients, they use enterprise solutions that are paid and licensed. For example, if customers are using cloud access security broker CASB solutions like Zscaler or Netscope, there's no way for you to lab it yourself unless you're already an existing customer or you're willing to pay for it yourself. The same goes for tools like CrowdStrike's EDR. So the reason they're not talking about it is it's because it's not straightforward. Number three, now that you know about security engineering, uh, I want to talk a, lot, a, a little bit about myself and my history. Before I got into security engineering, I was a network engineer. I had a solid background in networking, designing and deploying routers and switches and Wi-Fi solutions. I was already writing documentation, maintaining systems and troubleshooting networks. That experience gave me an edge when transitioning into security engineering field. But here's the thing, you don't need years of experience in networking or help desk to make the switch. I could have transitioned earlier. That was my mistake. I've seen many people become security engineers without being a sysadmin or network engineers first. At that time, I wanted to get out of networking. It was becoming repetitive and I wanted something more out of my IT career. I saw people making the transition into cybersecurity, earning more money and not having to deal with mundane tasks. I paid close attention to these folks and asked them questions. Like I always tell you guys, don't ask for guidance from someone who hasn't been there and done that. Seek advice from people who are ahead of you. They told me, hey Sohil, you need to learn the tools and platforms. You have to set up everything yourself, maybe multiple times, so you can do the same for other companies. They advised me to look at the job descriptions for security engineering roles, find the common themes, and learn those tools individually. Which leads to the next part. There is no certification pathway for this when it comes to these tools. The common theme I found were 
deploying and managing SIEM solutions like Splunk. The next one was deploying and managing next generation firewall solutions, which for me at that time were Cisco, Fortigate, Palo Alto, and Checkpoint. Another one was deploying and managing WAF solutions and load balancers like F5, Netscaler, and things like that. EDR solutions like CrowdStrike and Microsoft Defender, vulnerability management and assessment tools, operating system hardening, cloud solutions like Azure and AWS, automation and scripting, infrastructure as code, you might be asking yourself, so hell, what certification should I pursue to learn these things? The answer is none. I mean, Splunk provides certification exams and training. You can follow th those things as well, but you have to learn these tools and systems individually. Here is how I did it. I use Udemy, YouTube, and some premium training providers to learn these skills. For some tools, I actually paid for the licensing myself. I invested in my growth. Unfortunately, people are willing to spend money on things that don't help them in the long run. But when it comes to investing in their future, they cannot see the bigger picture. Personally, by investing money in my training, some courses cost me thousands of dollars. I've made 20 times that amount in my career. So you have to make a list. Search online on Reddit, Udemy, or YouTube and learn these systems and platforms by setting them up in your lab environment. Luckily, there are many courses out there on how to deploy and maintain SIEM solutions. The same goes for firewalls. But for tools like CrowdStrike EDR, I actually purchased a license for my home PC. I deployed it from scratch using CrowdStrike's documentation. I did the same with vulnerability management and assessment tools. I installed trial versions on my home network, watched some courses and learned them. Number five. Now let's talk about security engineering in 2025 and beyond. The field is evolving rapidly and there are some crucial areas you need to focus on to stay ahead of the curve. As security engineers, we are now expected to automate operations to make things smoother and we will need to pay attention to automation. It's becoming a necessity. We're moving towards infrastructure as code, IAC, where we define and manage our infrastructure with code and automation tools. This means getting hands-on with tools like Ansible, Terraform, Chef, and Puppet. By automating repetitive tasks, we reduce human error and free up time to focus on more strategic initiatives. If you want to future-proof your career in cybersecurity, especially cybersecurity engineering, you need to get comfortable with automation tools and scripting. You have to learn scripting languages like Python. Understand how to use automation frameworks to deploy and manage infrastructure efficiently. Cloud security principles. You have to dive deeper into cloud provider and their tools like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. They have free tiers and extensive resources on how to get started started. DevSecOps practices. You have to get on, get hands-on experience with CI, CD pipelines, learn how to integrate security tools into these pipelines to catch issues early on. Threat modeling techniques. I don't want to get into the details guys, but threat modeling is a big thing. You need to learn about that as well in 2025 and beyond. But at first, you don't need to pay attention to that. But learning that is a good thing. So to summarize, if you want to become the next security engineer, here's what you need to do. Number one, make a list, go through the job descriptions for security engineering roles, note down the tools and technologies and skills that are repeatedly mentioned. Number two, find the right training. You can use platforms like Udemy, INE, and CBT Nuggets. Also, don't overlook independent training providers and boot camps. They often offer specialized courses. It's okay to spend money on boot camps. Number three, create a plan and implement set achievable goals. Maybe focus on one tool or skill per month. Apply what you learn by setting up labs or contributing to open source projects. And number four, invest in yourself. Don't shy away from spending money on quality training or necessarily licenses. The return on investment can be substantial in your career, guys. So if you like this content, make sure to follow me for more and subscribe to my channel. See you later.